Hi guys, had a few requests to show you how I do my uh, varnishing. Now this piece has been drying for like two weeks, so it's good to go. You gotta make sure it's thoroughly cured before you do this. And the way I do it, I just don't mess around. I just put it on there. I try to go one way, let it dry, and then come back and do it again. It's really easy. And when I do these, I line up like 10 or 20 boards at a time so I can just kind of take the time and needs to do it. Now these panels here, people like to uh, frame them. Other times they want me to add cradles to them so they'll uh, kind of be self-framed. They can just put them on the wall. But either way, once this dries, you'll see it will really turn vibrant. And while I'm doing this piece, I can show you, see all this crackling? A lot of people ask, aren't you worried about crazing or cracking? It's like, no. I love that. That's why whenever I, I do a lot of these, you'll see that my boards are already pre-painted a certain color. And whatever I do my pour is based on the contrasting color. Obviously, the contrasting color to the green is red, so that's why I did mostly red hues, and you see it looks cool. So cracking and crazing, none of that bothers me. So that's all I do is just kind of make sure it's nice and thin, not too thick, but even. It's important to get it even. That's it. I'll come back in like, I don't know, four or five hours, put another coat on. Okay, I varnished, I don't know, 20 pieces. And I've had a few people ask what my studio looks like, so I thought I'd do a little tour. This is the workbench. Got on my little essentials. This is my LED light for filming. This is the table I set my camera on. This section over here are recent pieces that you may or may not have seen on videos recently. This is like the rack that I don't touch for like two weeks while they dry and cure. This whole area here. This is a uh, project for a bunch of Michigan cutouts that I'm still working on. There's some pre-cut masonite boards. It's a sugar skull LED thing I made. It's kind of cool. These here are ready to either be varnished or in the final stage of making signs out of them because some of them I use to uh, make these little signs with the sayings on them. And then this is uh, the varnish table. That the ones I just did. This is the one that's in the video. It's been a few hours, so it's probably a good time to do a second coat. I like to do three coats sometimes. Depends. Some of these I'll have uh, resin, like this one here. I think that'd look cool resin. Well, they'd all look cool resin, but... These here is like my on-deck circle. Some of the boards I prime and paint different colors, so I can use contrasting colors whenever I do the pour. And this is my swiping tool. It's big. Can't even hold it. <laughs> I'd say it's like 12 inches wide. Well, maybe. 16 inches wide and this is the heat gun I use this is the torch
and this is the view that I look at when I make the videos all my paints accessories there's a white that I spilled yesterday all over the bench anyways I'm gonna do another coat of varnish on the red piece uh, see you later nice to drive sometimes I'll steal wool it but I'm not gonna worry about it on this one again this is what I use now the last time I went this way so I want to go the opposite way on this this one put too much on but that's alright I also get asked a lot about how I get rid of silicone, but I actually don't run into that problem very much because I don't use much silicone. And I think because the the heat gun, I think it dries it out actually, I'm not sure, but see like I was saying before, these cracks, I just love that. And that's from using the heat and uh, it, it expands and I think that's how I get rid of a lot of the silicone. I'm not looking for s smooth. This is what I'm looking for when I make it. So, anyways, I'll let that dry for another three hours. Probably go back the other way. Depending on how it looks, I may do another one after that. So, that's it. Thanks for watching.